Welcome to Statics. Three-dimensional vector angles. In this video, I will briefly review vector notation. Then I will discuss 3D vector direction angles. You may have noticed that notation for vectors may not always be consistent. Unfortunately, different sources of information may use different notation. Let's review the most common forms. First, scalars. Scalars are typically denoted with a light typeface, or in other words, not bold, letter. Both lowercase and uppercase letters may be used. Vectors found in textbooks are often shown with a bold typeface, uppercase letter. Sometimes they are bold with an arrow over the letter. Sometimes they have the arrow but are not bolded, or instead of an arrow, simply have a line. These last two are commonly used in written work, since writing in bold typeface is cumbersome. Vectors in Cartesian notation follow a similar pattern. Textbooks often use bold, i, j, and k. In written form, it is easier to put a circumflex or caret above the i, j, and k. A shorthand notation is also shown, which is convenient to use when actually doing vector operations. Finally, for unit vectors, usually a lowercase u is used with bold typeface, a caret, or an arrow. Sometimes an uppercase U is used. Let's turn our focus to defining vector direction in three-dimensional space. There are two common methods for defining vector direction, coordinate direction angles and azimuth and elevation. First, coordinate direction angles. The orientation of vector F can be defined by direction angles alpha, beta, and gamma, measured from the tail of F to the positive x, y, and z axes, respectively. Let's look at this more closely. We have three angles that may be used to define the direction of the vector, one measured from each axis. First, alpha defines the angle between the vector and the x-axis. Note that the plane alpha is in is the surface between the f vector and the x-axis. Beta defines the angle between the vector and the y-axis. Gamma defines the angle between the vector and the z-axis. Note that alpha, beta, and gamma are sometimes referred to as theta x, theta y, and theta z. Here is a dynamic figure of a three-dimensional vector that you have access to through the course materials. The tool allows the user to rotate the image, which is helpful for visualizing the vector in 3D space. Note the three angles, one from each axis, that define the direction of the vector. If I rotate the image so that I look directly down one of the axes, you can see two direction angles, but the vector appears to be in the plane of the screen, which you find is not the case when you continue to rotate the image. Let's consider the relationship between the vector, the direction angle, and the vector axis component. We know that the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which means the cosine of alpha is the x component of the vector divided by the vector magnitude. We can rearrange this expression to solve for the x direction component. It is the vector magnitude times the cosine of alpha. Similar relationships can be shown for angle beta and the y direction component, and angle gamma and the z direction component. Sometimes we call alpha, beta, and gamma direction cosines because of these relationships. Here is the general form of a vector using Cartesian notation. We can substitute in these force components. That gives us a vector in terms of the three direction angles. I can pull the magnitude f to the front of the equation. Now I have a notation in terms of the vector magnitude and a unit vector. Another way to look at this is to take the equation for finding a unit vector, expanding it, then substituting in these highlighted values. Doing so gives us the same unit vector in terms of the direction angles. So in summary, the cosine of each angle gives us the components of the unit vector. We can manipulate these equations depending on what information we're given to find the remaining variables. For example, if we already know the direction angles and the magnitude of a force vector, we can use these equations to find the x, y, and z components of that force. Let's now find the direction angle identity, which will be a useful tool for us. Here's the Pythagorean theorem for three dimensions. We can rewrite it in this common form. 
Now, let's take each term and divide it by f squared. Now, the first term is just 1. Let's substitute each of the remaining terms with the equivalent cosine expression, previously defined and shown here. We get this identity, which can be rewritten in the more common form as this. This is the direction angle identity. It allows us to find the direction angle, alpha, beta, or gamma, if only two are given. It turns out that this is a fairly common occurrence, since only two of the three angles are actually needed to define a vector, if we also know the vector's magnitude. Let's look at a quick example. A 3D vector, f, has a magnitude of 4.8 kilonewtons, and acts at an angle of 48.2 degrees from the x-axis and 60.3 degrees from the y-axis. Give the angle of orientation of the vector relative to the z-axis. The 48.2 degree angle is alpha. The 60.3 degree angle is beta. We need to find gamma. We will use the direction angle identity. First I fill in the known information. Then I use algebra to rearrange the equation and isolate the cosine of gamma. Finally, I take the inverse cosine of both sides to get gamma. It is equal to 56.1 degrees. As previously mentioned, there is another common method for specifying the direction of a vector in three-dimensional space. This is by using two angles, the azimuth and the elevation. The azimuth is an angle in the horizontal plane and is measured from one of the axes in the plane. In the figure shown, the azimuth is the angle theta as measured from the positive x-axis. The elevation is the angle of the vector relative to the horizontal plane. In the figure, the elevation is the angle phi as measured from the horizontal plane. To fully define the vector, the magnitude is required in addition to the two angles. Here is a dynamic figure of a three-dimensional vector that you have access to through the course materials. This figure allows you to adjust the vector magnitude and the azimuth and elevation angles. Then rotate the image for visualizing the vector in three-dimensional space. Note that when I view the vector in an aerial view directly above, aligned with the z-axis, I can see the angle theta that is acting in the horizontal plane. When I view the vector as if I were standing on the ground, viewing parallel to the horizontal plane, I can see the angle phi showing the elevation of the vector from the horizontal. You should note that sometimes the elevation angle is reversed and measured relative to the vertical axis. The azimuth angle may be measured from either of the two axes in the horizontal plane. Note the right triangle relationships formed when using azimuth and elevation to define a vector's direction. Let's find the x, y, and z components of the vector. Unlike with alpha, beta, and gamma directions, we can't just plug and chug with the equations. We have to do a little more thinking. First, let's find the component of the vector that is in the horizontal plane. I will call it f horizontal. By looking at the right triangle relationship in the figure, shown in purple, we see that the component of the vector in the horizontal plane is equal to the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the elevation angle phi. Now we can get the x-axis component. Note the right triangle relationship between f horizontal and fx, shown in green. We see that fx is equal to f horizontal times the cosine of the azimuth angle theta. Substituting in from the previous equation, we get an expression for the x-direction component in terms of phi and theta. We can do something similar to get the y-direction component. The z-direction component is the vector magnitude f times the sine of phi. Note that these formulas are only valid for the angle configuration shown in the figure. If you need formulas for another angle configuration, you can derive them the same way we did here. 